The outbreak of COVID-19 has been a national challenge to say the least. Thanks to His Majesty, uh, health officials and law enforcement and many other actors, we have not had community transmission. Uh, personally, I could already tell from the online classes I had that they were not going to be the same as before. Um, I tend to think that, especially in a small setting, harmony among students and faculty members is something that is difficult to replicate online. Uh, many of my friends shared in the sentiment because they also believe that a college experience is so much more than just lectures. But what I have learned from recent developments has been humbling. I realized that not everyone has the same level of access to learning facilities like computers, laptops, phones, or decent internet connection. I also realized that the economic ramifications between the economic ramifications are disproportionate between uh, urban and rural areas, between higher income bracket and lower income, between skilled and unskilled labor. Therefore, we have to deal with this topic of inequality. In 2019, Bhutan's unemployment rate was at 11.9%, which is 4.4 times the national average. The outbreak of the virus has added more fuel to the fire by furthering this already large disparity. Um, employment prospects of the youth, which were already low, has been further reduced. Now, more than ever, is the time for reflection. Um, there is little to doubt that the forces of the market economy create wealth and jobs at a higher rate than any centralized system. COVID-19 was a market externality that no one could have predicted. Um, we must continue down this path of emboldening our private sector. Unfortunately, the hospitality sector was also one of the hardest hit industries in Bhutan. The lesson I take away from this is that there should be concerted efforts to diversify Bhutan's economy. To quote common adage, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Jobs of the youth must come from all sorts of sectors. Manufacturing, for instance, is something we ignore. I know this is a huge, enormous tax to undertake. After all, we can't even meet our basic needs without India's help. The idea of buying cheap and selling for more is ambitious, but I believe that this is exactly the sort of courage and creativity we need to show at this period. Uh, an unfettered market economy can easily descend into social ills and chaos generated by wealth inequality. This is where the government comes in to ensure that the playing field remains even. So uh, to in, uh, strengthen social protection programs for all and to uplift the unprivileged out of poverty. In this age of globalization and a globally integrated economy, we can debate how much we want of it, but we can't completely avoid it. Especially an economic recession, especially in larger nations, will reverberate and its impacts will come to our country, as demonstrated by this pandemic. Uh, and this will most likely happen again. So the question we need to ask now is, how will we deal with this in the future? We need to foster an economic system that works for all Bhutanese. I will leave the details up to the political scientists and the economists, but I would assert that when an economic recession happens, People, especially the unprivileged, must not need to worry about basic needs such as housing, food, medicine, and so on. On the education front, a major systemic weakness came to light. Bhutan is not prepared for e-learning. As I have gathered from my friends, not every place has decent internet connection, and media streaming sites are still very expensive, and uh, not everyone has access to computers. In my view, what COVID-19 has done is uh, what COVID-19 has done is shed light on the need to have a robust IT infrastructure to prepare Bhutan for an education system of the future. Furthermore, the government must ensure equal access to these infrastructures uh, to students of all kinds of backgrounds. I don't want to sound too pessimistic. The fact that we could do what we did with e-learning in such a short amount of time is itself a feat. The next issue I wish to discuss at hand is challenging to answer. I am talking about the need to create, encourage, and incentivize a culture of self-learning in schools. Uh, from what I gathered, and I must include my own experience as well, most students were having a difficult time grasping new information as effectively as they would have done in schools under the immediate guidance of their teachers. 
um, I think we must strive to create such a culture of self-learning in schools without depending on teachers too much. After all, the goal of academia is not to reproduce, but rather to create new knowledge. I will end on a positive note. Amidst all the harm and changes that COVID-19 has brought, it has also given us the opportunity to be creative. Uh, we learned that a lot of learning content can be outsourced to online learning. For instance, imagine by what percentage can we cut back carbon emission if we were to uh, conduct physical, uh, if we were to cut back on some physical classes that can easily be conducted online. Uh, how much man hours will we save that can be directed to soft skill improvement and personal development? This is not the time to lament, but rather to reinvent our ways. Thank you.